How do you change the person and not the background in Lightroom Classic? To do that you need to use a mask, so come up to the masking tools here and click this, or you can just hold down Shift and press W. You can now come down to this box and click Subject. This is going to automatically try to select the subject in the photo. You can see here that I've turned red, that means that I've been selected, and any changes we make to these sliders is only going to affect this area on screen. So for example, I can make myself brighter, increase the contrast, decrease the shadows, change the color temperature, or make any other changes that I want to make. How do you make a background black and white but keep the person colorful in Lightroom Classic? To do this, you're going to need to use a mask, so come up to the masking tools here and either click this or hold down Shift and press W on the keyboard. Next, you want to come down to this background button and click it, and Lightroom is going to try to automatically work out what the background is and what the subject is. This red area here is what's been selected as the background. However, if I zoom into my leg here, by pressing Z on the keyboard and hold down spacebar and drag it across, you can see that my leg under this table has been included as part of the background, which we don't want. So what we can do is we can subtract some of this red mask away by clicking the subtract button here. And there's a few different options you can choose from. For example, you can choose to subtract an object. And what we need to do now is paint over what the object we want to subtract is. So I'm just going to do this quite roughly for this demo. Lightroom's going to try and work out what part of that was an object. You can also click the subtract button multiple times to keep subtracting areas from the background. For example, you can use a brush, make sure the flow is set to maximum and the feathers fairly small, and then just paint over the areas that you don't want to be included in that mask. While you're subtracting from the mask with this brush, if you do see some red, even when you go over it like this, make sure that your density is also set to 100. You can see now, as we paint over, the red disappears. So I just did a really quick job there. You can spend more time on that yourself. And once you're happy, the whole background has been selected with this red mask. To make it go black and white, come down here to the saturation slider and reduce this all the way to negative 100. If you do still see some color in the background, like this grass here, come up to this amount slider and increase this all the way to maximum. You can see now the background is completely black and white, but the person has stayed in color. How do you make a photo black and white in Lightroom Classic? There's a couple of different ways to do that. The simplest is to come into the basic section, come down to the saturation slider and just reduce this all the way to negative 100. That's going to take out all of the color in the image and then you can play around with the other sliders and the other effects to get the look you want. Let me just undo that. The better way, however, is to actually process the image as a black and white image. To do that, come into the basic section here and click on this black and white treatment here. You can see now the profile changes to Adobe Monochrome, and this gives us some extra controls, which I'll show you in just a second. So now if we alter things such as the white balance, we're not going to change any of the actual color information because we're no longer working with color. You can also click these four boxes here, come down to this B and W section here, make sure that's expanded, and this will give you some starting points to start your black and white edit. You don't have to use one of these, however. Let's just click close to go back to the basic editing tab. Notice down here vibration and saturation is grayed out. We can't actually change these sliders because we're not working with color information now. You can once again make any edits that you want. But because we changed it to the black and white treatment, we've got this additional B and W panel here that we can use. What this will do is it will mix the original color information into the black and white process to give us some additional control. So for example, we'll come down to the green slider here, and if we move this around, you can see that it affects any of the green that was in the original image. Let's try the blue, purple, magenta, orange, yellow, and red. When you're happy with the black and white mix, you can of course keep making additional changes There's four different ways to change the colors in your photos in Lightroom Classic. The first and most severe way is to change the temperature and tint for the white balance here. So we can warm the image up by moving the temperature to the right, and we can make it feel cooler and bluer by moving it to the left. You can also change the tint, make things look greener or more magenta. You can also use these white balance presets to see how the colors look. The next way is to use the tone curve here. Using the tone curve, you can change the curves for the reds, greens, and blues in the image. So for example, let's select the green channel here, and we'll make some changes. 
And by doing this, we're altering the colors for all of the greens in the image. And you can do the same thing for the reds and the blues. Let's just turn that off by clicking this switch here and look at the next method. So the tone curve gives you a bit more control over the basic temperature and tint sliders, but the changes can still seem quite harsh. To get finer control over the colors in your image, come down to this HSL section here. This allows us to change the hue, the saturation, and the luminance of reds, orange, yellows, greens, aquas, blues, purples, and magentas in the image. If you want to see the hue, saturation, and luminance all together, just click the All button, and this will expand down the panel. So for example, to change the color of the greens in the image, you can move this green slider under the hue section. And as we do this, you can see the greens in the image are changing. Similarly with the aqua colors, we can change those and the blues and so on. If you want to reset these, just double click on the section. So if I double click on the word hue here, it resets all of those sliders. Another way to use these sections is to click on this little target button here and come over to the image and choose the colors that you want to affect. So once again, let's choose some of these greens. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and then move the mouse up and down to change the hues. Notice in the sliders here, it's actually changing the greens and the yellows because the point that I selected in the photo consisted of green and yellow colors. So for example, let's make these greens more yellow. And for the ocean, once again, click the left mouse button and hold it down and move the mouse up and down to change the colors. You can also do a similar thing with the saturation, either change the sliders or click the target button here, choose a color, hold down the left mouse button and move your mouse up and down. And you can see now we can even make these colors turn black and white. I'm just going to disable the HSL edits by clicking this toggle here. And we'll look at the fourth and final way to change colors in your photos, and that's to use the color grading section here. The color grading section allows you to change the colors for the shadows, midtones, and highlights in the image. So for example, if you want to give the shadows a different color, let's say blues, you can drag this circle to the blue section. If you want to change the color, just rotate this outer dot. And if you want to change the severity, click this center dot and move the mouse button left and right. You can do the same thing for the midtones. So for example, let's make the midtones green and let's reduce that effect. And for the highlights, let's make the highlights blue and then reduce the effect a bit. Once you've got the severity of the effect, you can move the color around independently. How do you make eyes whiter in Lightroom Classic? To do that, you need to use a mask. So come up to the masking tools here and either click this button or alternatively hit Shift and W on the keyboard. After a few seconds, you should see in the people section here, one or more people's faces show up. In this photo, there's only one person, so that's why we're only getting one face. If you hover over the people here, you can see they turn red, indicating that's the person to create a mask for. So click the person you want to change the eyes on, and now you can change different areas of the body and face. For example, if you check the eye sclera checkbox, we just get the whites of the eyes selected. But if you wanted the whole eye, including the whites and the iris and the pupil, you can combine tick boxes. In this case, we're just gonna leave the whites of the eyes selected. Now you can come down here and click the create mask button. And now you can go and whiten the eyes of the person. So for example, you could try increasing the exposure, increasing the highlights, increasing the whites, or a combination. Don't go too far with this, otherwise things will look really odd. And as a bonus tip, you can go and create a new mask by clicking the plus button here. Once again, choose select people, select the person, in this case me. This time, check the iris and pupil box and click create mask. And now you can make changes just to the pupil. So for example, you can increase the brightness of the pupils. And even if you wanted to, change the eye color. How do you make the edges of a photo darker in Lightroom Classic? So once you've finished making all of your basic edits to your photo, you can come down to this effects section and now you can use this amount slider to make the corners of the image darker or in other words, to add a vignette. If you move this slider to the right, notice the edges of the photo go white, but more normally you're going to want a black vignette. So move this slider to the left. You can see now the edges of the photo are getting darker. You can change the midpoint, the roundness from circular to more rectangular, and also the feather to change how subtle the transition from black to photo is. 
You can also use the highlight slider here to change how the vignette appears on highlight areas. So as I'm moving this, look at the top left and top right of this photo. Notice this slider is only affecting these highlight areas and not the bottom left and right, which are more shadow areas. As a quick tip, when you're adding vignettes, it's useful to come over to the left here and expand this out so you can see this navigator. As I change the amount of vignette now, look in the top left corner of the screen here. It gives you a much better idea of how severe the vignette is. How do you create a panoramic image in Lightroom Classic? If you've only got one photo, then you can use the crop tool at the top here. You can either click this or hit R on the keyboard and then drag the top down and the bottom up to create a panoramic looking photo. To help you see what the final cropped panoramic image will look like, hit L on the keyboard to dim the surrounding controls and hit L again to make everything go dark except for the crop that you're trying to do. Even though everything is dark here, you can still move the crop up and down to create the image you want. Hit L on the keyboard to bring everything back and when you're happy with the crop, hit enter on the keyboard to apply it. The second way to create a panoramic image is to take multiple photos and between each photo swing the camera around left or right. So you can see here this first photo is towards the left, the second photo is a bit more towards the right and a bit more towards the right and at the end it shows the right hand side of what we want to make into a panoramic image. Once you've got multiple photos select the first one, come to the last one, hold down shift and select it and then right click, come over to photo merge and choose panorama. Lightroom will now try and stitch together all of those four separate images into one panoramic photo. Lightroom gives us a preview of what the final panoramic image will look like and if you want to you can turn off this auto crop setting and then you get the white areas where there's no photo information as part of the panoramic stitching. So we'll turn that back on and if you want to automatically apply develop settings as part of the stitching process you can click the auto settings box here. And instead of using this cylindrical option, you can try for the spherical option. Watch what happens to the preview. Notice how the panoramic image shrinked from the top and bottom. And if we go back to cylindrical, it expands a little bit from top and bottom. Just gives you a bit more height. Normally auto settings is gonna look pretty bad. So you'll probably want to turn that off and then hit merge. If you look at the top now, you can see Lightroom is creating this panorama and when it's finished, it will appear in the grid view next to the original four photos. So if I scroll down here, you can see we've got this new panoramic image and if I hit D on the keyboard to go to the develop module, we can once again go and make changes to this photo. How do you change the size or shape of a photo in Lightroom Classic? To do that, you can use the crop tool. So come up here and click the crop button or hit R on the keyboard. You can now use these corner handles or the side handles to change the size of the new image. If you want to change the shape and size to anything you want, come over here and click this padlock so that it unlocks. And now you can move any of these sides independently to create the new size and shape you want. When you're working with the crop tool and you want to get a better idea of what the final photo will look like, hit L on the keyboard. This will dim out the rest of the user interface and hit L again to make everything go black except for the photo. Even though the user interface is not visible, you can still move things around in the frame and even change the size of the crop. Hit L on the keyboard to see everything again. You can also use preset shapes or aspects Click this drop down here and then choose one of these preset shapes or aspect ratios. For example, one by one will give you a crop in a square shape or another example, 16 by nine will give you a 16 by nine aspect ratio. If you want to rotate the crop, hit X on the keyboard. And now this 16 by nine has been rotated into landscape format. If you want to go back to the original shape and size, come back to this drop down and choose original. You can also type in values for the shape or aspect ratio, come to this drop down and come down and choose enter custom. And now just type in an aspect ratio. So for example, if we wanted the shape to be twice as wide as it is long, we could enter a two by one crop here and click okay. And now the final shape of the image will be a two by one aspect ratio. When you're happy, hit enter on the keyboard to apply the crop. How do you get rid of dust spots in your photos in Lightroom Classic? What you need to do is come up to this healing tool here and click it, or alternatively hit Q on your keyboard. Now you can choose this heal brush to get rid of dust spots. So for example, if I zoom in on this top right corner, 
you can see we've got quite a few dust spots here. First thing you need to do is change this brush to an appropriate size. You can do this by changing the slider for size here, or you can hit the square brackets to make this smaller or bigger. You basically just want this to be just a bit bigger than the dust spot itself. If I zoom in on this a bit more by using Control plus on the keyboard, we can then click on each of these dust spots to remove it. If you want some help in finding any dust spots, come down to the bottom here and click this Visualize Spots checkbox. You can then use this slider to alter the effect. And for example, up here, it's telling us that there might be some dust spots. So I'm going to zoom in up here. And if I uncheck this checkbox, you can see that it's found some quite hard to see dust spots. There's one here. And if I check this box again, it's telling us that there's one in this area, but notice how you can't really see a dust spot there. And that's what this slider is for. You can now just go through your image, changing the size of this brush to remove other dust spots. And if you hold down space on the keyboard and then drag your mouse around, you can move around the image to find any other dust spots. How do you change an object, but not the background in Lightroom Classic? To do this, you can use a mask, come up to the masking tools here or hit Shift W on the keyboard and then come down here and click objects. There's two methods you can use to find the object in the photo. This first one allows you to paint over the object and the second one allows you to draw a rectangle. So we'll start off with this second one, click this rectangle icon and then draw a rectangle over the object you want to change. In this case, we're gonna try and change this laptop. Lightroom will try and select this object and if we zoom in, notice here it's kind of selected a bit of the table as well. We could manually remove this by clicking the subtract button, choosing brush, making sure the flow and density is set to maximum and then just painting away the bits that don't contain the object we want to change. Once you're happy that the entire object is selected, you can go and edit it however you wish. So for example, we could make this laptop brighter. Another way to select and change an object is to once again come to the masking tools, click the plus button here to create a new mask, and once again, click objects. This time we're going to use this version, so click on this little brush here, and now we can paint over the object we want to change. What we're going to do is try and select this speaker. When you're using this this brush object selection. You want to make sure you paint over the entire object and just a little bit extra around the edge of the object. Make sure you color the entire object in and then let go of the mouse button. And you can see now it's done a really good job of selecting the speaker. And once this is selected, we can make any changes that we want here. How do you remove an object from a photo in Lightroom Classic? For example, in this photo, if I zoom in here, we've got this rather unsightly patch of burnt or damaged grass. To try and remove this, come up here and click on these healing tools or hit Q on the keyboard. Next, make sure you've got this content aware remove tool selected. And now you can alter the size of this brush by using this slider or using the square brackets on the keyboard to make it smaller or bigger. We'll just zoom in to make things a bit easier to see and reduce the size of this brush a bit. And now we're just going to paint over the entire area that we want to remove. We'll overlap a little bit around the edges here and also make sure that the entire inside is painted. And now let go of the left mouse button and Lightroom will attempt to patch this together. You can choose whether or not to see this overlay by coming down to the bottom left and choosing never to remove it. You can also set this to automatic, always or selected. If I just move the mouse over to the right here, you can see that Lightroom has done a pretty good job. If there's some areas that you want to refine, you can come up to the healing tool, for example, and then paint over some edges to get the look that you want. We can see now if we zoom out, we no longer have that ugly patch of ground. How do you zoom into a photo when you're editing it in Lightroom Classic? There's a few different ways. So if you've got no tools selected, such as masking tools or healing tools, you get this magnifying glass by default. If you click somewhere in the image, it's going to zoom in on that area. And if you left click again, it's going to zoom out. Let's zoom in on the hills in the background here. And notice at the top left here in this navigator section, it's telling us what the current zoom level is. In this case, 100%. You can use this drop down to change it to different zoom levels. So if we only wanted a 50% zoom, we can click that. And now every time we click, we're going to switch between full screen and a 50% zoom. You might want to zoom in more, so you can use a different preset such as 400%. And now when you click on an area, it will zoom in to 400%. Let's just change this back to 100%. When you click to zoom in, 
you can hold down the left mouse button and then move the screen around to move around at that specified zoom level and then once again click once to zoom back out. If you hold down the control key on a PC and use the plus and minus keys on the keyboard, it will zoom in and zoom out of the image. If you let go of the control key, once again hold the left mouse button down, you can drag around and look at the image. To zoom back out, just click the left mouse button. How do you make the sky darker in Lightroom Classic? To do this, you can use a mask. Come up to the masking tools here and either click this button or hold down shift and press W on the keyboard. Next, come down to this sky button and click it. This will automatically tell Lightroom to try and select any sky in the image. You can see now the sky has gone red. That means that this area has been selected by the mask. We can now use these sliders to make changes. For example, we can darken the sky with the exposure, perhaps darken the sky using the highlights. We can alter the contrast of the sky here and alter the whites and blacks to make the sky darker. If you want to see what this looks like with and without the sky mask, come up to this masks panel and click this little eyeball. This is without the sky mask and to turn it back on, click it again and this is with the sky mask. How do you make the sky look bluer in Lightroom Classic? There's a few different ways you can try to do this. For example, come up to the HSL panel here, click saturation and either adjust the blue slider here but notice if you do this, it's actually making the land and the ocean bluer as well. So that approach may not always work. We'll just reset that. A better way is to come up to the masking tools here and either click this button or hit Shift W on the keyboard. Next, come down to this button and click Sky. Now Lightroom will try to automatically detect the sky in the photo. To make the sky appear bluer, you can now use, for example, this temperature slider and move it towards the left to make the sky look bluer. If you go too much, it's going to look a bit unnatural. You can also use the hue slider here to completely change the color of the sky, but in this case, we want to make it look a bit bluer. If you find that this slider moves too quickly, you can check the use fine adjustment tick box. And now when you move this slider, it's going to move a lot more slowly to allow you to really dial in the color that you want. If you want to, you can also try to increase the saturation of the sky to really increase that blueness. We can disable this mask by clicking this eyeball here to see what it looks like without this mask. And if we click this eyeball again, we can see what it looks like with the mask. If you find that you've added a bit too much blueness and it looks a bit unreal, make sure you've got the sky mask selected here and then use this amount slider and just move it to the left just to dial things back a little bit. How do you make colors look more punchy in Lightroom Classic? The first thing you can do is add some contrast. So a simple way to do that is to use the contrast slider here. And whenever you add contrast to an image, it's going to make the colors appear more saturated. Watch what happens when I drag this contrast slider to the right. Notice that the colors are starting to appear a bit more saturated. I'll just double click this to reset it. You can also use the Vibrance slider here to add saturation to areas of the image that aren't already very saturated. Watch what happens when I increase this Vibrance. Some parts of the image get affected more than others. For example, in the foreground rocks here, there's hardly any color because they're gray. So the Vibrance slider is going to affect those more than areas that already have a lot of saturation. If you want to increase the colors and make them look more punchy for the entire photo, you can use the saturation slider. Unlike the vibrant slider, this will increase the saturation of areas that are already saturated. Or in other words, it doesn't matter what the original saturation was. It will just increase it for everything. When you're using these sliders, you don't want to go overboard, otherwise things will look terrible. Another way you can increase the punchiness of the colors in your photo is to come down to the HSL section here. Make sure you're in the saturation section and then use these sliders to increase the saturation of specific colors in the image. So for example, if we wanted to increase the saturations of the greens, we can use this slider or the saturation of the blues in the image, we could use this slider. I'm just going to reset all of these sliders by double clicking on saturation. And instead, I'm going to click this targeting button here and then come over to the image. This allows you to select colors that you want to increase the saturation of. So for example, in the sky here, I'm going to hold down the left mouse button over this blue area and then move the mouse button up and down. Notice when I do that and the sliders on the right hand side here, it's changing mainly the blue slider, but also a little bit of the aqua slider. 
So we can increase the punchiness of these blues just a little bit. And maybe we also want to increase the punchiness of these greens. So I'll hover over it, hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse up. And you can see these greens get more saturated. How do you fix lens distortion in Lightroom Classic? Some lenses will distort the image more than others. Normally, the wider the angle of the lens, the more distortion you're going to get. To fix this, you can come up to Lens Corrections and open it, and then click this Enable Profile Corrections tick box. Watch what happens to the image when I do this. Notice it kind of gets a bit brighter and the perspective changes just a little bit. Also notice here Lightroom has automatically selected the lens that was used to take this photo because that lens information was embedded within the raw file. You can tweak this however by changing the distortion sliders here and the vignette sliders. You can also check this remove chromatic aberrations tick box and that's going to try and remove any little fringing of the colours in the image. If you're using an adapted lens or an older lens or a vintage lens on your camera, when you open up this lens correction section and check enable profile corrections, you might find that you don't get any information here. That's because the lens didn't send information to the camera and the lens information wasn't recorded into the file. In this case, you have to go and manually select the lens. In this case, I know this photo was taken with a Canon lens, so I'm going to select Canon here. And for the model, I know this photo was taken with the EF16-35 to f2.8 version 3. So I'm going to select this lens here and then that's going to apply the lens corrections. If I just use this switch here to toggle the lens corrections off, watch what happens to the image. It kind of looks a bit fishbowl-like. Let me turn it back on and off and on. How do you make sure that you don't lose information in the light and dark areas in your photo when you're editing in Lightroom Classic? The secret is to use the histogram here. Watch what happens if I use the exposure slider to make the image darker. As I make the image darker, eventually notice this triangle here turns blue. That means we're starting to lose some color information in the shadow or darker areas. And if I continue to make the image darker, this triangle turns white. That means we're losing a lot of luminance information in the shadow or dark areas. The opposite's also true if I increase the exposure. Notice that this triangle has gone blue, which means we're starting to lose some color information in the highlights or light areas. And if I continue to make the photo brighter, eventually this triangle turns white, which means we're blowing out the highlights essentially, and losing information in those brighter areas. Just going to reset this exposure. You can also toggle on these triangles. So if I click this triangle, it will allow us to see shadow clipping in the photo. And now once again, if I decrease the exposure, you can see down here that we're getting these blue areas where the shadows are starting to clip. And it's not just the exposure slider that can make this happen. If I decrease the shadows here, we get a similar thing happening. And if I decrease the black slider here, anywhere where we're seeing this blue is where we're losing shadow detail. And you can toggle this off by clicking the triangle and toggle it back on. The same thing applies to the highlights here. You can click this triangle to toggle on highlight clipping. And if we were to increase the whites, notice that parts of the sky start to turn red. This is where we're clipping or losing highlight information. And you can turn this off by once again clicking the highlight clipping triangle here. And you can see that area of the sky has almost gone completely white. We've lost all detail there. How do you get a level horizon in Lightroom Classic? There's a couple of main ways. The first way is to use the crop tool here. So click this crop tool button or hit R on the keyboard. And then you can simply use the crop tool to rotate the image until your horizon looks level and then hit enter on the keyboard. I'm just going to undo that. Another method using the crop tool is to either manually move this angle slider until you get it looking how you want, or click this little ruler here and then draw a line along the horizon. This will help Lightroom automatically work out what angle the crop should be. And once again, hit enter. Just going to reset that. The second way is to use the transform panel here. Before you go and use this method, you'll want to come up to lens corrections and make sure that you've enabled profile corrections. Once you've enabled Lens Corrections, come back to the Transform tab and then click this Level button. Lightroom will then try and automatically work out what a level horizon should be in the photo that you're working with. How do you make the darker areas brighter in Lightroom Classic? The easiest way is to simply come to the Basic section here and increase this Shadows slider. As I do this, you can see that it opens up all of the darker or shadow areas of the image. Alternatively, you can use this black slider 
to make the darker areas appear brighter. Let's just reset these. The second way is to use the tone curve panel here. When it comes to altering the brightness in your image, you're either going to use the parametric curve here or the point curve here. We'll start off with this point curve. This allows you to make darker parts of the image brighter. Darker parts of the image will appear on the left hand side of this graph. So if I click and then drag up here, notice in the image that it's bringing up the brightness of those shadows. Once you've done this, you'll probably also want to counteract that increase by bringing down some of the highlights. Just going to right click and reset this. And we can also use the parametric curve here. The parametric curve splits the photo into four regions, highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. And we can alter these regions using these sliders here. So if we want to make the shadows brighter, we just move this slider to the right. Notice in the image, those shadows come up. We can also use the darks slider here to bring up areas that are not quite as dark, but still in that darker area of the image. You can use the parametric curve and this point curve at the same time. And you can also use it in conjunction with the sliders here. One thing to be careful of when making darker areas brighter is that you can sometimes introduce noise into the image. How do I change the white balance of a photo in Lightroom Classic? There's a few different ways to do this. What we're going to do is come up to the basic tab here. And the first method we're going to use is to manually alter the temperature and tint sliders. If you move this temperature slider to the left, the white balance is going to get cooler and the image is going to look bluer. If you move this temp slider to the right, then the image will look warmer. The tint slider allows you to fine tune things by adding some green by moving it to the left or some magenta by moving it to the right. Just going to reset these by double clicking on them. The next way you can set a white balance is by using this eyedropper tool here. You can click on this or hit W on the keyboard. Notice this kind of pops out of the circle and then you can move this tool across the image to find an area that represents white or neutral gray. This method doesn't always work particularly well unless you can find a spot that is actually gray in the image. So for example, let's try these rocks. I'm going to left click. Notice how the whole image changes now. What happens when you click an area is that it changes the temp and tint sliders here. Let's just undo that and the image turns slightly bluer. You can also use the white balance drop down here. There's a number of different options. If you want to use the white balance that was shot in the camera, you can choose as shot. Now whatever white balance was set in the camera at the time this photo was taken will be set. You can choose Auto to try and allow Lightroom Classic to automatically select the white balance. And you can also choose one of these preset white balances. If you took the photo in daylight, you can try daylight. If it was cloudy at the time, you can try cloudy. Or if it was in shade, you can try shade. There's also tungsten, fluorescent and flash. How do you sort photos in Lightroom Classic? We're currently in the library module here. If we want to change the sort order, come up to the view menu, come down to the sort menu option, and then choose a different type of sort. You can see at the minute we're sorting by capture time, but there's a whole host of other things we can sort by. If we choose edit time, it will arrange things by when we last edited the photo. So the photo at the top left here was the last one that I edited in Lightroom. Let's go and change the sort. If you've applied ratings to your photos, you can sort by rating and things such as label color, file name, and file type. An interesting one is aspect ratio here. So let's sort these photos by aspect ratio. Just click this. And now the photos will be grouped by their respective aspect ratios. You can see all of the photos at the top here all feature a square aspect ratio and ones further down have the original aspect ratios. You can also sort in ascending or descending order. To do that, once again, come up to the view menu and come down to sort and then choose either ascending or descending. Let's change this to descending sort order. And now the square aspect ratios appear at the bottom. If we come back to the sort order here and change back to edit time, at the minute the most recently edited photo is at the top. But once again, if we change this sort order to ascending, now the most recently edited photo appears at the bottom of this list. How do you find photos in Lightroom Classic? Make sure you're in the library module here, and then you can use these filters at the top to find photos. The first filter that you can use to find photos is this text filter. You can choose whether you want to search within a specific searchable field, such as file name, or a more flexible approach is to leave this set at any searchable field. Now in this search box, you can enter the text you want to search for. In this case, I'm entering a file name. And notice now, once I type in this file, 
file name, the view changes showing me only photos which match the search results. If I were to delete the number from this and just have R4, then we get all of the photos that have R4 anywhere in any of these searchable fields, such as file name, copy name, title, caption, and keywords. You can also use this drop down to further refine the search results. For example, you can use the doesn't contain option. And if I click this, no photos show up because all of the file names start with R4. But if I type in a specific file name, it's going to show me all of the photos except for that file name. If you want to turn off this filter, click once again on this text to disable it. You can also search by attribute by clicking the attribute text here. And for example, you can search by rating. Does the rating equal one star, two star, three star, four star or five star? But you might want to show, for example, photos that are three stars or higher. To do that, click the little equal sign here and choose rating is greater than or equal to. Now it will show you any photos that have three, four or five star ratings. You can also search by whether or not photos have any status flag unflagged photos, or photos that have been rejected, and all of these add together. So for example, if I select four stars or higher and rejected, it's not going to show me any because there's no four star or higher photos that have been rejected. Just going to click this again to turn off the rejected filter. And you can also use these items here to further filter things to only photos that you've edited or photos that you haven't edited. You can combine these things. So for example, say you wanted to find photos with four stars or higher that also had a specific file name, you would also enable the text search here. And now it will show you any files that have 3513 in them that are also four star or higher. Once again, you can disable these filters by clicking on these items at the top and then all of the photos will appear again. You can also search by metadata, such as when the image was taken or what lens was used to take that image. So if I wanted to see all photos with the 16 to 35 lens, I'd click on this. And now down here, all of these images were taken with that 16 to 35. How do you export a photo in Lightroom Classic? The first thing you want to do is select one or more photos that you want to export, and then either come up to the file menu, come down and click export, or right click on the photo, come down and choose export, and click export. This will open up the export dialog. You can choose one of the presets on the left here if you want to, or if you don't want to use a preset, choose where you want to export the file to. Normally, this is going to be hard drive and then come over to the right here, choose where you want to output the exported photo to. So you can choose a specific folder by clicking this option. So for example, you could choose desktop here. You could choose a specific folder by clicking specific folder and then clicking the choose button here to choose where you want to export the photo to. Once you've chosen a location, click select folder and then you can use these other options. If you want to, you can rename the exported file, or if you uncheck this, it's going to use whatever the original file name was. For the image format, you can choose the original, or you can export, for example, to JPEG and adjust the JPEG settings to a Photoshop file, to a TIFF, whether that be an 8-bit TIFF or 16-bit TIFF, and whether that's compressed or uncompressed. You can export to a PNG or a DNG. In this case, let's leave this as JPEG. If you want to, as part of the export process, you can resize the image, either by specific widths and heights, or for example, by a specific percentage. And you can also choose the resolution here. If you want to include some sharpening during the export process, tick this box, choose what you want to sharpen for, for example, displaying on a screen, and then choose the amount of sharpening you want. You can choose low, standard, or high. If you want to include metadata in the exported file, you can tell Lightroom what metadata to export. And if you want to, you can remove sensitive information, such as any person information and location information that might be present in the export. You can add watermarks to your exported files, and you can also choose what happens once the export has finished. You can either do nothing, you can open up in Photoshop, open in another application, or show in the file system. So let's choose Show in Explorer, and now click Export. And at the top here, you can see Lightroom is working on the export, and once the export's finished, Lightroom opens up the file location. How do you rate photos in Lightroom Classic? So first of all, make sure you're in the library module in this grid view and then come to the view menu, come down and choose view options. First of all, change these cells to be expanded cells and come down here and make sure the show rating footer is selected and then close the view options. To rate a photo, you can either click these buttons here 
to give it a two star, three star, five star rating, whatever you choose. You can use the one to five keys on the keyboard to set a rating of one, two, three, four, or five. If you want to clear a rating, hit zero on the keyboard. That will remove all stars. And if you want to increase the rating by one star, hit the right square bracket key on the keyboard. And to decrease the stars, hit the left square bracket key on the keyboard. If you keep going with the left square bracket, eventually you'll remove all of the rating. You can also set ratings for multiple files. Click the first one and then hold down shift and click the last one. And then either click the buttons down here or use the one to five keys on the keyboard. Or to remove the star rating for all of these photos, hit zero. Let's give all of these photos a two star rating by hitting the two key on the keyboard. And if we want to, we can filter by two star rating by coming down here, choosing rating is equal to and selecting two stars. How do you copy photo edits to other photos in Lightroom Classic? For example, if we went and edited this photo, so for example, increasing the exposure, maybe adding a sky gradient and increasing the shadows. What we can do is go back to grid view by pressing G on the keyboard. We can right click on this photo that we just edited, come down to develop settings and choose copy settings. When you click this button, you're going to get this pop up here. You can specify exactly what settings you want to copy to other photos. If you want them all, click the check all button. Or if you want to remove them all, click the check none button. And then you can just choose specific things. So if we wanted to copy all edits, we could do this. But for example, say we just wanted to copy the changes to shadows and also the masks. In this case, there's only a single mask. That was the gradient that we used to darken the sky. Once you've chosen the settings you want to copy, click the copy button and then right click on the photo you want to copy them to, come down to develop settings and then you can choose paste settings. Watch what happens to this photo when I click this button. Notice its settings get updated. Just going to hit Ctrl Z to undo that. Another way you can copy settings is by first selecting the first photo that has the edits that you've done, holding down the shift key, and then selecting the last photo that you want to apply the edits to, and then come over to the right hand menu here by moving the mouse over here and click the sync settings button. If you click this button, you get to choose which edit settings will get applied to the other photos. So for example, let's choose check all and click synchronize, now all of these four photos here will have the same edit settings as the first one 